speed em ups tend to have an attack string where you can combo different moves by pressing the same button repeatedly. The attacks tend to get stronger with each hit and the last attack usually knocks the opponent backwards or upwards. In this video I'll go over my thought process and the hurdles I had to overcome while implementing my first combo string. The basic attack combo will be your most used offensive option, so it's very important that it feels impactful, responsive and is fun to use. I always love the way this feels in the streets of Rage series through making the enemies shake when they are stunned and using fitting sound effects and a hit spark. So I will use that game as my base reference for now. Before I even started working on the combo, I first implemented a very simple system to make the sprite jitter when the character is stunned. Upon receiving any damage, the character is set to stunned for 1 second. Later on I need to make a system to change the duration based on the type of attack. In the case the character is not dead, I set it to stunned and reset its attack state and modify the movement mode so it can't walk anymore. In the end I activate a subroutine to shake the sprite from left to right every 0.08 seconds in my case. Here I simply move the sprite back and forth by 8 units. The stun also needs to be cleared after its duration, so we call the clear stun function with a delay. This sets the character to not be stunned and back to walking movement. It also clears the subroutine of shaking the sprite. I also went into the flipbook of all the animations I implemented prior and made sure they are all set to 60 FPS. Especially if you come from fighting games, you think of frames in terms of 60 FPS. So this will allow us to set how much startup, active frames and recovery frames each move has much easier. The free character asset I am using so far does not have any fitting animations for these types of attacks, so I need to go into Ace Sprite and draw additional frames myself. Again, I'm not an artist and just recently started to learn about pixel art, so I am not at the stage yet where I can make an original character myself from scratch, but eventually I want to replace this character with my original creation. First I looked for a sprite sheet from Streets of Rage 4 and analyzed the separate frames of each attack to get a better understanding of what makes a good attack string. I remember watching a GDC presentation from the art director of Skullgirls a long time ago, which had a lot of great advice that still sticks with me. When I looked at the sprite of Axel I could tell that the artist also followed similar principles and I wanted to try to incorporate them into my animations as well. I wanted to keep it simple at first, so instead of using the sword I simply wanted to create a jab, cross, hill strike, 3 hit combo. I first started out with the jab, the attack needs to be really quick and I didn't want to have any big movements here. I tried to apply the principle of adding follow through here by having the character's hair blow forward but kept it pretty static otherwise. After that I did the cross and here I needed to turn the character a bit and add much more movement. I applied the principle of overshooting by making the arm longer by one pixel on a single frame, however looking at it now I failed to apply follow through on the skirt and should have made it move forward on the recovery of the punch to make the animation feel more powerful. For the last attack the warrior draws her sword and attacks with the hilt of it. I added a little bit of a smear effect here on the sword and also made the skirt move forward with the follow through. These animations are far from great, but considering that I've never drawn anything in my adult life until 2 months ago, I'm glad I could create something that at least resembles an attack combo. I then imported the sprites into Unreal Engine and implemented them in the animation tree I get from Paper ZD. Here I simply check that our attack is the chain attack and at which point in the chain we are currently. But this is where the real challenge started. You'd think that making an attack string system like this wouldn't be that hard and you just make a counter that counts up for each hit and reset the combo if you don't press the button for a while, right? Well, it turned out that I was struggling more than I anticipated getting this just right and needed to try out a few different things. There are actually multiple things we need to consider for the implementation and also game design decisions we have to make. Do you want the chain counter to go into the next attack only when you hit an enemy or also when your attack misses? After how many seconds do you want to reset the chain counter if we don't press the attack again? Do you want to reset the chain counter when you use a special move in between or do you want to keep it going? Do you want to allow cancelling of the attack into the next attack of the chain or do you play out the recovery animation of each hit and use an input buffer to start the next attack once the previous one is over? There are multiple ways you could take this and the implementation will change accordingly. For example, there's another beat-em-up I've been playing a lot recently which is called Fight and Rage. In this game the chain attacks do have a recovery animation, but it only plays out if you miss or don't press the attack button again. If you press the attack button again you will instantly cancel the recovery and go into the next attack in your chain. Also you can use your special move or even dash while you're doing your chain attack and it won't reset and allow you to continue your chain where you left off. 
In Streets of Rage 4 the recovery animation always plays out and you only buffer into the next attack. Using special moves will also reset your chain counter so you start at the jab again. I decided to go with the latter approach for the time being. However I don't have an input buffer implemented yet, so the game still feels quite stiff. This is definitely an important part I still need to do research on and we'll probably talk about in a later devlog. Let me give you a quick walkthrough of what system I ended up with. When you press the attack button it will set your state to basic attack if you ground it. That will trigger the animation tree to play the jab. This is where I used to trigger check hit from the animation notify, however it turns out that animation notifies are actually really bad for triggering gameplay critical events because they are not guaranteed to fire instantly or even at all. For many years of working with Unreal Engine this is the way I did it and also the way most tutorials teach it. Most of the times this works out just fine, but when you use animation blending or want to fire off an event very close to the beginning or end of an animation, it will fail maybe 1 out of 50 times. Because I also used this to end the attack state before, my character would sometimes end up getting stuck in the attack state and not return to idle, so I needed to come up with a different solution. For resetting the attack I would instead use an event on the animation graph that comes with paper ZD. On anim sequence playback complete will trigger whenever a flipbook animation finished playing, so this will let us know that we want to reset the attack state. To trigger the hitbox and check if we hit something I implemented a different system altogether. A developer named Alex left a comment on my first devlog suggesting the usage of sockets to trigger events which worked out pretty nicely, so thanks a lot for the suggestion. I needed to add sockets on the active frames of the attack anyway to set the position where the hit spark should be played, so this approach didn't add any extra work. Weirdly enough though, even if we set a socket only on the active frames of an attack, Unreal Engine will also create that socket on all other frames of the same flipbook. So on tick we don't only have to check if we currently have an attack socket, but also that the position we set it to is not the default of zero. So this feels a little bit hacky. In case we do have a socket that was manually set, we can now trigger our hit overlap. Here we apply damage to each hit enemy. In the case that we did hit something, we play hit spark at the socket location. We also save a reference of if the last attack hit something or not. If we didn't hit anything, we reset the attack chain to the start. Back in the animation graph on the event that triggers whenever an attack finished playing, we fire off try increment basic combo. Here we check for the value we saved before and only increment the chain in case our last attack hit. Try reset combo count will reset the chain back to the beginning in the case that we used the last attack in our chain. We also use set timer by function name to reset the combo if we don't attack again for one second. As you can see the implementation ended up being quite complicated and I needed to spend a lot of time doing research and trying out different things. For the next devlog I want to finally get into special moves, knockback and fun things like that which make combat much more exciting. So make sure to subscribe if you are interested in seeing how that turns out. Thank you for watching until the end and see you in the next video.